Hi friends, let's learn today about allosteric enzymes. Allosteric enzymes are those that change their conformation upon binding to an effector resulting in an change in the binding affinity at a different ligand binding site. The allosteric regulation means regulation of an enzyme by binding of an effector molecule at a site other than the active site. Let me sum up. This is the enzyme. You know that enzyme usually contains active site. But in allosteric enzymes, there is another site called allosteric site. Okay. So these are the enzymes which contain both the sites. Binding of one molecule here affects the binding of another molecule at the active site. That is the meaning of allosteric enzymes. The site to which an effector binds is termed as allosteric site or regulatory site. This is the allosteric site. The molecules which are binding here are called as effector molecules. The allosteric sites allow the effectors to bind to the enzyme or protein. This allosteric modulation is used to alter the activity of molecules and enzymes. So the binding of these allosteric molecules or effector molecules they may either increase the activity of the enzyme or they may decrease the activity of the enzyme. Those molecules that enhance the protein's activity are known as allosteric activator. Let me tell you the meaning of allosterism. Allo means other, steric means space. So these are the molecules which are binding to the other spaces. What is the other space here? Usually the space is active site. What is the other space here? This is allosteric site. So allosteric enzymes, we can see there is some other site apart from the active site. We are in the activators. Activators are those molecule that enhance the proteins activity or enzymes activity. And those effector molecules that decrease the protein's activity are known as allosteric inhibitors. So there are two terms. What are they? Allosteric activators are there. Allosteric inhibitors are there. Those two. Here there is categorization. The molecules which are binding to the allosteric sites are called effector molecules or modulators. There may be either allosteric activator or allosteric inhibitor or we can say that they have they can mo modulate either positively or negatively what are they modulating they are modulating or affecting the enzyme activity what is enzyme activity converting the enzyme into substrate is nothing but the enzyme activity here we can in this diagram we can clearly see the allosteric inhibition as well as allosteric activation here Let's see first the allosteric inhibition. Here there is an active site, the common site which is present in all the enzymes. As it is the allosteric enzyme, there is one more site which is present. It is called as allosteric site. In the allosteric site, if a molecule, which molecule usually if an inhibitor binds to the allosteric site, what happens here? This binding of the inhibitor will bring a change in the active site will bring a conformational change in the active site thereby the allosteric site it changes thereby the substrate it cannot bind to the active site see here the active site is changed its conformation that is why the active the substrate molecule cannot bind here why it cannot bind here? Because the because of the binding of the inhibitor molecule. There is an altered active site. Likewise here whenever we see this allosteric activation, this is the usual enzyme. But here 
a molecule is binding this is the allosteric site to the allosteric site two molecules can bind it may be either inhibitor molecule or an activator molecule what happens if an activator binds to this allosteric site what happens here the active site changes its conformation so that it allows the binding of the substrate when the substrate binds to an enzyme what happens the product formation takes place so this one activator molecule is allowing the formation of the product whereas the inhibitor molecule does not allow the formation of the product product is not formed in this particular case whenever inhibitor is binding whenever activator is binding it is uh, converting the substrate into the product thereby increasing the enzyme activity okay so depending on the type of the molecule the effectors may be two types we have seen positive allosteric effectors and negative allosteric effectors negative allosteric effectors are called as inhibitors positive allosteric effectors are also called as activators now these effectors can also be two types depending on which molecules are binding if the substrate itself is activating the enzyme then this is this effector is called as homotrophic effector for example we can see in case of hemoglobin oxygen and carbon dioxide they are the substrates which are binding to the hemoglobin whenever oxygen and carbon dioxide substrates are binding the activity of hemoglobin is increasing okay so which are binding here the substrate itself is activating the protein or enzyme then it is then this it is said to be homotropic effect we'll see another one if another molecule other than the substrate is binding to an effector which is either increasing or decreasing the activity then it is said to be heterotropic molecule heterotropic effector for example in the same hemoglobin Uh, hydrogen ion concentration carbon dioxide 2 3 bisphosphoglycerate they act as a heterotropic allosteric modulators of the hemoglobin now you uh, there is there should be clarity between these two effectors are positive allosteric effectors or it is also called as activator negative allosteric effectors called as inhibitors depending on the molecules which are binding if the substrate is a uh, changing its activity it is called as homotrophic tropic effector if the other than the subject uh, other than the substrate if some other molecules are binding and they are changing the enzyme activity then they are said to be heterotropic effectors okay then we'll see what is meant by cooperativity most of the allosteric enzymes have multiple coupled domains or else subunits they have they are usually multi subunit complexes which show cooperative binding what is meant by cooperativity by the word itself we can make out that there is some mutual cooperation mutual helping so here the binding of one ligand affects the binding of the subsequent ligand for example if this is an enzyme to this one one ligand is bind one molecule is bind to the uh, see here this is the allosteric site one molecule is bind here there may be several kinds of types of this enzymes in the vicinity which are making that means in the enzyme itself there may be multi subunit complexes na which allowing the binding of more and more effector molecules to this one that is the meaning binding of one ligand affects the binding of the subsequent ligand if the binding of one ligand activates then it allows the binding of more and more ligands to the enzyme there may be two types of cooperativity one is the positive cooperativity another one is negative cooperativity 
okay binding of effector molecules or activator molecules they lead to positive cooperativity binding of inhibitor molecules they lead to negative cooperativity slowly the enzyme activity would be decreasing in negative cooperativity and it is increasing in case of positive cooperativity most of the allosteric enzymes they greatly vary in the catalytic output in response to the small changes in the effector concentration what are these effectors the effectors may be activators otherwise inhibitors so depending on the concentration of either activators or inhibitors the allosteric enzyme activity it differs very greatly it increases suddenly or else it decreases it is due to the interconversion from t state to the r state what is meant by t state tensed state uh, imagine whenever uh, a teacher comes to your classroom suddenly or else if uh, uh, he scolds you or else if the principal comes how do you sit you sit in a tensed state okay when nobody is there you will be relaxed state you will be performing your duties normally likewise here there is some interconversion among the enzyme molecule which is converting from t state to the relaxed state in the relaxed state the enzyme activity is taking place in the tensed state it won't perform any enzyme activity and this is the graph which shows the significant uh, pattern of enzyme activity and this is the substrate concentration and uh, the rate of reaction usually it is sigmoidal rather than parabolic the curve is sigmoidal okay and these enzymes do not obey michaelis menten equation according to michaelis menten equation it is usually the curve is parabolic that parabolic curve is not seen in case of allosteric enzymes and they are producing what type of graph sigmoidal graph instead of parabola coming to the examples of the allosteric enzymes aspartate transcarbamylase glycogen phosphorylase phosphofructokinase glutamine synthetase these are the few best examples for allosteric enzymes among all these in the next class we are going to study aspartate transcarbamylase hope you understood the concepts of allosteric enzymes well thanks for watching